Welcome to Morning Moments. I am so glad you took the time, whatever platform you're watching this on, to join us for Morning Moments. Uh, I have uh, a special guest today that's an author, Billy uh, Joyce uh, Jaus. I knew I was going to mess it up. I knew I was going to mess it up. Uh, Billy Jowls. She is a uh, author, but we have a lot in common. You get two nurses together. We have nursing stories and nurses got a warped sense of humor that you won't believe. And uh, she is a, uh, she was an ICU nurse before she stopped nursing. And here I was a psych nurse. And so we have a, a lot of great stories that we were back and forth on. She wrote a book. She's wrote uh, about three books now. A distra uh, this one's called Distraction D detox and uh tell us a little bit about yourself what do you do and why do you do it oh gosh what do i do i run around the earth trying to keep up with my husband and my boys is that what i do no i do that too but um david and i david my husband is in professional baseball and we feel that baseball is our mission field and that's where we do a lot of mentoring and, and leading and guiding people to jesus and just helping them walk the walk and um about Oh my gosh, 2003, I was approached by a woman that um, had led a baseball chapel. There's actually an organization that gives church services, Bible studies, spiritual dis discipleship to people in baseball, men and women, the players and the wives or girlfriends. And she was the one that headed up baseball chapel devotions that are online. You can still get them now. They're still out there. But she asked me to write devotions for baseball chapel and i'm like i don't write i'm a nurse i was a nurse i yeah i'm homeschooling my kids right now but i'm not a writer she's like we've well, got great experience in life you you love the bible you love jesus just put some things together and send it to me so that's what i did for about 10 years i'd send in these writings of you know just life experience and biblical teaching and a little prayer at the end, all wrapped in scripture and send it to her. And about 10 years, 11 years after that, a friend got in touch and said, Hey, I'm writing a book on how to write a novel in 10 minutes a day. Would you get any pig the book, go through it with me. And I'm like, Catherine, I'm not a writer. She goes, haven't you been writing devotions for like 10 or 11 years now? Well, yeah. So that took me into a new place of going through that book with her falling in love with writing and then fast forward to my son, my baby boy, my baby boy, who's 26 this year, graduating from high school. And I was sitting in church one Sunday and said, Lord, what do you want me to do for you now that my life is changing and things are going forward? And he very clearly said, I want you to write. So being the good, obedient Christian woman I was, I laughed and said, I think you got the wrong person, Jesus. No, not right. I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. Um, and then just sort of began to obey where God was calling me, you know, hearing his, his booming voice at times telling me how wrong I was in the direction I was trying to go in and serve and really sat back and started writing. So now I have a couple of books out. I do a daily devotion Monday through Friday that goes out by email called Morning Sunshine. And I have a podcast. So my world is a bit different than what I thought it was going to be when my baby boy graduated high school in 2015. You know, when you become uh, available, God doesn't look at your ability. He looks your, at your availability. When you become available, he says, now that you're av available, now I will show you what you want to do. He doesn't call the equip, but he does equip who he calls. <laughs> Very much so. The funny story I tell people all the time, especially my high school friends that knew me back in the day, math and science were my thing. English was not. I almost flunked out of high school English twice. Like two years, I came so I saw a report card recently. I got a D in my freshman year of high school English. A D. That is not a future writer. That is not somebody in their own ability that could go and write a book. And in that, you know, I, I really argued with God because that's what I do sometimes. I know it's not the best thing to do, but I sort of argue with God of God, how can you use me? I didn't, I barely, you know, graduated high school English. And then I'm from a small town outside a small town on a farm in Eastern North Carolina. I don't even speak English, no less right at Lord. Like I came up with every excuse I could. But when I did submit and say, Lord, use me for what yeah. it is that you desire to use me for, 
all of a sudden the ability came that I would write things and look at it later and be like, Ooh, that's good. Who wrote it? Who wrote you that? Know? And the Lord wrote it in a sense through my hands, through me allowing him to use me in doing that. And it's powerful. It is, you know, I think one of the biggest things I I'd see is the peace that comes in our lives when we allow God to use us and we realize God's best in our life. And that so many times we stop from happening because of what we think, see, or want to do. That is not where God wants us to be. We, we can get a lot of distractions, can't we? Yes, we can. Which takes us to, you happen to write a book called, I just so happened to throw good that in segue. there. Good Se- segue. Good segue. Thank you very much. <laughs> D- Distractions Detox. Uh, this is your na- latest and greatest book uh, about releasing emotional barriers. Distractions can steal your joy. Uh, what was this all about? What would what, you write? Yeah. Um, the book before this was called Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. And that was just overcoming that busyness in life. And that's really where it started of my process of writing a book in the first place was I was trying to do all the other things. And my husband said I had the right hand syndrome where uh, people would say, oh, we need somebody to volunteer for this. And I go, I'll do it. I'll do it. But I wasn't doing really what God was asking me to do. I was just doing busy work. And so in that book, I, I got really good and disciplined at getting rid of the excess the excessive things of of controlling my schedule stuffers of, you know, overcoming those types of things. And I did that. And I, I saw that I was still distract, distracted. There was a lot of doubt and discouragement that I was feeling. And in those moments, I'm like, Lord, I don't have a busy schedule anymore. Why am I still distracted from what it is you are calling me to do or what you want me to do? And that's when I started realizing what my thought process was. I, what, you know, I had to think about what I was thinking about. And me being a list maker, I sat down and started making a list of the thoughts of what is it that I'm saying to myself that's bringing such doubt and discouragement. Yeah. Now, some of it may have been that ninth grade high school teacher that told me I wasn't good at reading or writing. It, you know, and those are very few words that I held on to all these years. Or it could have been just me making up a story of, well, I wasn't educated in the Northeast. I can't be smart enough to write. I don't have a, you know, a seminary degree, so I can't write about the the Bible or Jesus. You know, I'm not a teacher, so I can't teach it. So all of those things, I sat down and made lists and came up with this incredible list of the fear, fear of success, fear of failure the fear that God could use me in something bigger than I was ready to do, the fear that God wouldn't use me if I did submit to him, the unbelief that God could actually use me to do anything that mattered, you know, and I believe in every word of the Bible. I believe in Jesus Christ. I, you know, I understand all of these, but it was me that was sitting in a place of not believing, sitting in a place of, well, I can't teach the Bible because I sinned as a teenager. I can't help another mother because I yelled at my kid. You know, I can't help a mother be a good mother because he yelled at my kid. I can't tell people out how to have a successful marriage because David and I really failed at marriage at about year 10. We're now married 33 plus years, but those were the thoughts I was having. Sure. And as I came up with those, I'm like, wait a minute, these are just all lies. These are lies that the enemy is holding me back from fulfilling what it is God's desiring to do in and through my life. And in that, I had to figure out how do I overcome these obstacles? How can I overcome this chaotic mindset, these emotional toxins that I talk about in the book, create spiritual jet lag? that confusion, that fogginess, that tiredness, that exhaustion, and how can I overcome that? And that's when I began that process of living out what it was that could overcome it, which is really feeling the emotions of what is going on when you have those emotional toxins. How does it make you feel? Mr. Psych nurse here, you're, you'll get this. And I relied on my son a lot, who's a sports uh-huh. psychologist. I was like, Charlie, am I like, 
am I hitting on all gears here? Am I really steering people the wrong way? Cause I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psych. And that was when the enemy comes in. You're not a counselor. You're not a psychologist. You can't tell people, you know, but to feel the feelings of those emotions, but not get stuck there to actually terminate those toxins by replacing them with truth. Do you think you think your 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 goal of or your desire of being more scientific and being more analytical really helped putting those those steps of detox and you you spell out the word detox in the yeah. book. Do you think yeah. that helped you a little bit? I do. I think my my analytical side comes in of process. I love process. I love organization. I don't like chaos. And my life is very chaotic. Our lives are very, very busy. And, and there's a lot of chaos going on. But I don't like my spirit being in chaos. And yeah. that's where I found myself. So putting that into a process to overcome it was so fulfilling. Brought on such peace. I noticed that because, you know, when you got an ICU nurse and a psych nurse in the same room together, talk about total differences. Uh, ICU nurses go into ICU because they know they could put this med down and they could put it in the veins and their blood pressure will go down or their sugars will go up or down and it's immediate success. And yeah. they love that. They, they yeah. love oh. that. Throw a patient into Trendelenburg to get, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, yeah, there's process. Like there are steps we can take to get the result that we desire. And not even as a nurse, do you always do that? Because the Lord, when they're going to, he's going to take someone home, he takes them home anyway. But as a nurse, there is a process and a step of that. It's sort of like being in baseball. Baseball is very analytical and very process driven. And I thrive on it. I love baseball. You know, we've been in pro ball. Dave, this is David's 36th season in professional baseball. All three of our boys work in baseball. I thought I'd get out one day and ain't happening. So in that, why I love baseball, it's the process of it. So that's why, yeah, I hadn't thought of all that until you just asked that question. You're so good. But getting into that process yeah. to find an end result that is a positive end result. Because as a psych nurse, you don't, you, you do something and it, you calm them down, but you know, it may help them for the time being, and it may help them in the long run to, to do better, but there's no, there's no immediate yeah. successes that you see. It's long-term and it's very frustrating for ICU nurses to work with psych patients. And, uh, uh, and you, they, they, they just, again, it's two yeah. different, two different directions. But I will say with this book, Distraction Detox, it is an ongoing process. I shared with you earlier that, you know, in the writing of the book proposal, as we do as authors, you have to write a book proposal, get it to a publishing house, get it approved. Through the writing of the book proposal, I was living this out before the book proposal because I went through it. And that, of course, I'm a list maker and I, and an organized person. I start making notes of what I was actually processing through into, you know, into some trauma that happened in our family. I lost my sister and brother-in-law in a house fire. And I write about it in the book. I wasn't planning on it. That was not the way the chapters were laid out because mm -hmm. it hadn't happened when I did the book proposal. But the Lord really pressed on my heart to write about how I use this process, in a sense, to live out the peace and be a light to my family during that time that I would have never done without, number one, Jesus in my life. If I didn't have the Lord and the Holy Spirit in my life, I wouldn't have been able to survive what we went through in that, you know, to going into writing the book and processing through what I had gone through that summer losing my sister and brother-in-law and all that happened with that in writing it and seeing how this process really kept me sane and kept me with hope and joy of celebrating their lives and moving through it. So this process, this, this book is not a one and done. You're going to read the book. You're going to be cured. This is it. You're healed. You're moving on. This is a process that we have to remember to live out every day. And that's because our Christian walk, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's so it's so often we hear people go, well, you know, this is what you need to do and it'll be all better. And no. people get so disappointed because we have to go back to the altar again and again and again because we're human and we yep. sin and we make mistakes yep. and it's a process we've never arrived until we arrive in heaven and uh but in the, in the process we get better as we 
die to self. And I don't know how, how I could say it any other way. I die daily. I die daily. And Sometimes you, momentarily, don't yes, you? Yes, absolutely. Like, it's like overcoming the thought, the emotional toxins that hit me of I'm not good enough. Why am I going? I, I'm just, you know, I just wrote a book. I, why am I going on your show? You know, you're reaching um, an incredible amount of people. Why is this happening? I can talk myself out of it. I can sure. lead with fear. I can lead with doubt. But if I turn it into truth that, you know, I have these scriptures on my wall and one is, um, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. I'm living in his power. I'm living through his love. And I have to have self-control of my thoughts to be able to push through that. Some of you needed to hear this today. And some of you need to get this book. Uh, and uh, I, I want to encourage you, go online, uh, look it up, uh, uh, Distraction Detox. And uh It'll be down below if you're looking. Uh, if you go to my Facebook or my YouTube uh, channel, I'll have all those links down below. Uh, get her other uh, other publications as the Lord leads you, as so that so you can have this information. More important than any of that, I want you also to pray for Billy because God's got a purpose, a plan, a hope for her. She was telling me about a wild tour of five places in 10 days, Alaska, back to Florida. You can't believe the, the, the travel she's been doing. You'd think she was a baseball player. But, uh, you know, it, God has just blessed her so much. But she covets your prayers that God would continue to use her and bless her and be with her family. Cause she's more than an author. She's a wife and a, and a mother too. And that God would continue to, to, to bless her. Billy, thank you so much for being on morning moments. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. All right. God bless you. Keep coming back, uh, share this information with others. And uh, thank you for coming to morning moments and God bless you.